What is going on guys? So today is an exciting day. We are building a bed. We've been out all day and I've been editing a video so it's kind of late in the day. I think it's about five or six o'clock in the evening. So we're just gonna have to see how this pans out. But yeah, it's very exciting for us to finally get the bed installed. So this is the wood we are going to be using. This is two by two, super sturdy, but not overkill. And we've cut all of our legs there. We've got about eight of them. We might need some more. And then me and B are just working out an angle and we've got this super new tool. Do you want to show them the new tool that we've got? Yeah, it's over there. Okay, so this is the new tool that we've got. It's called a contour gauge. And this thing is incredible. So, what we want to do is we want to get the angle of this here because it's slightly curved. So all we have to do is line it up and we can push that in and get the perfect angle around that piece of wood. It's absolutely incredible. And Blue Peter Styley, here is one we made earlier. Just cut this on the miter saw and it fits like a glove. Perfect, because without <laughs> that there would have been a nice big gap there which we don't want because we're going to put a metal bracket so this beam is supported by the frame of the van. Okay guys, so here is the frame of our bed. It's six foot long and the entire width of the van. We're not having the bed the entire width the platform is going to be the entire width. So right now we're just putting on these little um, blocks to protect this from the wall. And then we're going to be putting a mid beam in and then an edge beam. And then, because we've already tested it and it does fit perfectly in here, we will then be putting it in there and attaching it to the legs that we've got. It's the time to get drilling. Uh, but hang on. We've got a situation going on over here. Theo's got his knee pads on, which means serious business is about to go down. <laughs> so right now, Theo is securing this little strip along the edge to keep the um, slats in place, stop them bashing against the wall. And then another thing we'll also do to keep the slats in place lengthways is we can put a little notch here like a little wooden dowel or something on that one and then at the other end and it keeps them in place. So unfortunately we don't have two drills because I'd like one as a screwdriver and one to actually drill stuff but we don't have that luxury and it reminds me of back in the day when we used to use tapes to film stuff. I used to have competitions with my mates to see how quickly we could change a tape in the camera once the other tape died. So this is me doing the quickest change possible from screw bit to drill bit. You ready? Go. Not bad. <laughs> I reckon that's probably quicker than using a different drill. <laughs> I know in the comments you'll get at me for that, but pretty quick. Right, last screw in and then this frame is built. So over here, this last remaining section is actually going to be partitioned off and it's going to be our clothes storage and other bits and bobs. And we're just putting up this little um, piece of wood to keep the slats in place. But it's more of just symmetrical there. But for this side, it is actually going to be stopping the slats from potentially banging against the very thin cladding that we've got. Okay, so here is the bed frame in. None of it's secured in place with the legs yet. 
we haven't got all the legs in either. We're going to have three legs on each side. And then we're also going to be having a leg down here. And possibly a leg down here. Because we were thinking about having the gas locker there. But we might actually put a um, underslung gas in. So we might not need a gas locker. But we're going to have a little battery locker <laughs> here. So we're just going to secure the legs in now. Theo's getting the drill bits ready or the screws. So let's go. So I am thinking one and a half inch self tappers. So drill a pilot hole and put these straight in, but I just need to check. Obviously there's no wood going to be in front of this. So the whole screw is pretty much going to go through the metal. So I just want to make sure that I'm not going to go out the back. So these brackets are going in the back wall of the van itself. Yeah, so they'll be secured to the actual frame of the van like that. This won't be able to go anywhere and it will also support it from the back as well. So the metal brackets that I just installed was a super success and this thing is solid. That's just what we want. We don't want this moving at all. Hi. It's time to do the legs. Yes! <laughs> I'm ready. Today we are finally getting to use our pocket hole jig. Theo has been after one of these for months. Yes! <laughs> Ever since we decided we were going to do a van build, Theo was like, oh, we need to get a pocket hole jig, pocket hole jig, pocket hole jig! And this arrived at Amazon today. So um, we've done a little test actually, let me show you. Look at those holes. So basically, if you don't know what a pocket hole jig is, this thing creates extremely sturdy, strong joins at an angle. Look, check it out. So part two of pocket hole jig extravaganza is to put that massive thing on. <laughs> and then uh, go in at the slanty angle hole. That is the correct term, isn't it? The slanty angle hole. That is. And yeah, we're securing it across beam to the bottom of the bed frame. Sweet. Tight. <laughs> okay guys, so now that the bed is in and secure it means that we can now work on putting the bench in and actually last night we built the bench one part of it anyway let me show you so here is theo and his masterpiece this is the bench nice uh nice knee pads going on there mate thank you looking uh looking fire uh so this is the bench do you want to explain it to them yeah so l-shaped bench We've done it in two parts, so we've got this straight bit, that straight bit, then we're going to join them inside the van. And what it's going to have is we've got a gap here, we're going to have some runners, and our toilet's going to slide out here. We're going to have a cat flap here, and Ginger's litter tray is going to be there, so both of our toilets together. <laughs> Hopefully not too many smells going on. <laughs> and then, this is all going to be storage, all going to be storage there. We're gonna have lift up 12 mil ply uh, for, the, for the top surface that we can lift up, access anything we need to, same for here, and that should make it really nice and secure. And I've been pocket holing every single joint, so it's super secure and it looks really nice as well. Show, show them how the pocket joins are looking. So here we have an example of pocket hole joinery. It just creates a really nice smooth finish and also a very strong join, which is what you want for a seat. We've just cut these pieces of wood. They're not actually fixed. Look, probably all gonna collapse. Oh no, <laughs> just one. So this is the second half of the L that we're gonna put together now. And then we're gonna put all of that in that. Oh, what's that on the bed? Okay guys, so we actually grabbed some upholstery, some comfortable cushions for our sofa, check it out. These are from a caravan, we got them off eBay, we got them the other day and they are incredibly comfortable and they fit perfectly, in fact they're a little bit too big so we're going to have to trim them to length, but widthways they create a very very comfortable base for us to lounge on. 
And don't worry, we will be getting them re-upholstered. Yeah, we're <laughs> They're not, not going to stay like that. We're not keeping them with this theme. It does look exactly like the uh, three-piece suite my nan and granddad used to have when I was a child. But we're going to get them re-upholstered. We're thinking maybe a nice pale blue. That's one of our favourite colours. What do you guys think? So I've very nearly finished a whole L-shaped bench. I just need one supporting beam that goes across there. But I couldn't have done it without this bad boy. <laughs> this is a right angle uh, drill bit piece. So I can get into them really tight corners. Like you see up here, you can't get the drill up under there so you need to use a right angle drill bit so so useful next plan of action is to use that piece of ply and build a slide out deck for our toilet theo's just going to get the runners and then we're going to get building so we have just got back from screw fix where we picked up some runners that should come out all the way so our toilet can slide out from under our bench our tiny minds right now are getting a little bit frazzled, but we will get there in the end when we work out the exact measurements for this drawer. We got some instructions and some runners. So yeah, we just need to figure out how to build it into this section so that the toilet can pull nicely out of here on a nice platform. So we have just put the first set of rails on it's still twisting our mind. We still don't know whether it's gonna work, but I can't wait to find out. <laughs> Hopefully it's good news. So these are the rails. They come out just like that, fully extend, and hopefully that will be enough to nicely lift our toilet out. That's the plan. Now we've just got a, what we gotta do? Now, you, you can explain. Well, now we've got to basically make the frame that the toilet's gonna sit on, so. And make sure it's exactly yeah. perfect to slot into this. Yeah, the instructions are very bad. So we're kind it of- said that It said it came with screws and there's no screws. <laughs> there's no screws. What's going on with that? Uh, luckily we have a bazillion because, you know, we pretty much live in screw fix right now. So yeah, the next stage is to attach onto here basically, so let's. Let's give it a whirl. So now I've got to cut a lovely straight line for the bottom of the pull-out drawer. We got some super thick 18mm ply so it doesn't bend. This stuff's really good. And hopefully I'll cut a nice straight line. Uh do you want to put your safety goggles on? Yes. So a really good tip that I've learned just by watching other people's videos, look at me giving out tips, is to get a straight bit of timber and clamp it. Ideally clamp it at both ends, I'm just gonna use B as a clamp. I'm, I'm a human clamp today. <laughs> but what that does is it allows me to push along here and get one straight line all the way across without having to freehand it. So, the 18mm ply is cut to a lovely square, all went perfectly, nice and straight. And now what I'm doing is drilling pilot holes and screwing that into the sliders, or the supports that are on the sliders. And then it's moment of truth to find out whether it actually slides out. Because <laughs> if it doesn't, basically a day wasted. <laughs> but we've learned so much today, it's been incredible, so. I just can't wait. It's a really weird thing, but I can't wait to put the porta port potty on there <laughs> and slide it out. <laughs> it's gonna be hilarious. Moment of truth time. Does it work? Let's have a look. So nice, and it's soft shut as 
so you can discard that. Because we want it soft shirt, we don't want that stuff sloshing around. No, <laughs> <laughs> nice visual there. So now we need to take this off. The runners, uh, along here, there's like a little mechanism to take it off there. And then we've got a really nice front. Little frontal, frontal thing. Put a little handle on here. Yeah, make it look you cute. Pull it. Then we can pull it out. And then, once that's on, then we're going to put this in the van. And this bit as well. It's all coming together. It is. It really, really is. <laughs> I'm just like, I wanted to put one of these in the garage. Now I know what I'm doing, it'll be a lot quicker for the generator to slide out, out of the garage. So what I'm doing now is just lining up my pocket hole jig and then I can put some really nice hidden screws into the nice front cover of the slide out drawer and it should look really nice. Good time for the battery to die now. Eh? <laughs> Are you kidding? Please tell me we've got one on charge. <laughs> I can't believe it died literally midway. So the next step in the bench making process is to create the top base, which is going to be made out of this 12 mil ply. It's very thick, it's very sturdy. And basically we need to cut it exactly in half. It's 120 centimeters wide. So we're going to put this we're going to clamp this perfectly straight piece of wood perfectly in the middle and then with this little circular saw cut all the way along so fingers crossed it stays straight because we've only got one shot of this don't really want to go and buy another sheet of ply if we can avoid that from happening so fingers crossed Okay guys, so as you all saw in the time lapse, that little experiment was a success as far as we can tell so far. Just look at his face. He is a proud man. I love it when things man. go to plan. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a long sheet and it's perfectly straight, so. Let was, me show you guys what we've done. It was messing with our heads a bit though, because the grain goes a different way. Yeah. So like we were like, that's not a straight line, but it was, it was just a grain. With it wonky. didn't look straight, but we measured it and measured it and measured it. I think we measured it about four times, didn't we? And it was perfectly straight, so let me show you. So that is one massive piece. It's actually 2.4 meters in length, which is now 61 centimeters wide. And here's the other 61 centimeters. So as you can see, the grain here, it's quite prominent. And when we have the line drawn on, as you can see, the grain kind of goes towards this way. So it really did look totally wonky, but it's actually perfectly straight. So now we need to cut these to the size of the benches and then slap them on. Time to take the bench top in and uh, whack a cushion on it. Like a glove. So, so a little bench sheet update. This is what we've been up to. We have cut out a little ridge along here so that the other L-shaped seating area can go into it. The other work surface can slot into it nicely and have some support. And then over here, B's just sanding off a nice curved edge that we did just so it doesn't hit the wall. Guys, I got something very, very exciting to show you. Things are starting to change around here for the better. <laughs> we have got ourselves a lovely L-shaped seating area. So obviously it's not complete with the cushions because these are just the size cushions we need to cut to size. But look at this. This is where our composting toilet's going to slide out just like that, which is super cool and it's soft shutting. Oh, oh nice. Every time. Love it. 
and if B comes off the seat we can demonstrate how it lifts up so it's as easy as that you can get under here to all of your things and eventually we're going to get some really strong gas struts that are going to fit there so when we lift this up it will stay in place so we're super stoked and also this one does the same as well this lifts up and there we go we can get underneath get all of our things out very easily and it will generally just make this a really nice place to hang out so thanks for watching the video. We're super stoked with how this project is going. We're so excited to see how it's all gonna come together. It's just been one whirlwind of a journey so far and we're starting to really, really enjoy it. So keep an eye out, give us a thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next video. Head over to theindieproducts.com forward slash shop and check out our new merchandise. Join us on Patreon for exclusive content and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.